definitely not. Which is, do not believe in evil, the devil or Satan as hell. We see that as unnatural. Satanism is a form of Christianity. It's inverted Christianity. I'm, I'm not being flippant when I say that, but if you have a look at a satanic life, it is the Catholic Mass inverted. It has got nothing to do with witchcraft itself. Uh, the images of what Satanism is that linked it to witchcraft actually come from a, a document called the Malleus Maleficiorum, which was printed in 1486 to 87. Witchcraft does not adopt any harmful dogma from any other religion, although witchcraft is possibly the most inclusive belief system in all the world. Right? We will take anything that's useful and beneficial. We include anybody's deity. Right? Which is, don't worship evil because there isn't anything evil in nature. Many of the practitioners of the craft are herbalists, I, and they find ways to actually work with the cycles and the spirits behind these cycles of nature. So who do we worship? We worship the cycles of nature, the aspects of nature personified. Right? And in polarity, we have a goddess and a god. Right? Very flippantly, these are represented on the pentagram, the forces of nature as earth, air, fire and water. Um, are witches light workers or are they dark workers? Well, because they work with all polarities in nature, they work with both. They see the point of power as the I Ching does. The point of power exists in the middle, not by going out to any one extreme. Uh, is the pentagram the symbol of the devil? You'd be surprised how many times people see my little innocuous pentagram and go, oh, you're a Satanist. Thank goodness for the Da Vinci Code, is all I can say. <laughs> because now people know that it's the phi ratio. It's the symbol of the phi ratio. I, I won't go into too much mathematics. You know, very flippantly, the pentagram is on a superficial level. Earth, air, fire, water, and spirit, and a symbol of that. But it is the symbol of the subtle reproductive forces of nature that give our craft power, right? which the mathematics of is the phi ratio. One is to 0.618. Right? That is the way that nature reproduces itself. And you can see it reflected in all of nature. <coughs> If you have a look at, oh, also, the part, how do we get the pentagram associated with witchcraft? It's generally through Pythagoras. Mathematic, and Pythagoras is remembered for his mathematics, not his magic. But Pythagoras was a brilliant magician, and he had a goddess called Hygieia, and the pentagram became the symbol of not only his belief system, but also of hygiene. So he actually had lots of churches and lots of hospitals originally having the pentagram as their symbol. Churches were actually originally built with pentagrams in their foundations as it represented the five points of faith. Uh, frankness, fellowship, purity and courtesy, which was adopted by Christian knights. So there's the mathematics, and I won't go into that now behind the pentagram. But suffice to say, it's also in this spy spiral that we see represented in nature. Right? Um, it's the way the flowers bud. All flowers, all five petal flowers are actually two pentagrams together. Uh, and we can see it in things like moth wings, fish scales, pineapple spirals, the spirals inside a sunflower, um, pine cones, and also lightning actually branches at that 0.618 in the, in the pentagram ratio. All right, we're getting the wind up. So what I'd like to do He's very quickly flipped through some of these. Does the Bible prohibit witchcraft? That's a biggie. No, it doesn't. It's only the word witch is only seen once in the Bible, and it's in Exodus there saying, "You shall not preserve a witch alive amongst you," uh, and it's translated in other parts of the Bible as enchanter. But that word, actually, when you translate it correctly, is poisoner or one who poisons. So you can see a newly forming society wouldn't want that word in there. It got mistranslated again by King James for political reasons. Right? And the witch, witches in the Bible are actually approved. There is no negative case of witchcraft in the Bible. Yeah. This is a biggie. Do we sacrifice our kids? <laughs> no. Not even when they misbehave. <laughs> Being people who worship the cycles of nature, 
our children are sacred to us. The whole point of what we do is to make sure that the young are there to continue on. We worship these reproductive cycles in nature and therefore our children are our most sacred thing. The adults who are fully empowered and working with these cycles of nature do have the responsibility to protect the children. So seeing as how we're getting the wind up, I won't continue on with some of the things that we do do, like do we have implements and practice magic? Yes. Do we dance naked in some of our sabbats? Yes, we do, occasionally. Being naked is our sacred ritual robe. Right? We dress ourselves in the sky so there's nothing between the gods and us. That there is no... Because clothes always tell you something about a person. Right? And it creates a class and distinction. So when we stand in a circle, there is no head and there is no distinction about who's high or lower. Right? Um, if we've got nothing to hide, is the other thing. Why then, oh why, don't we come out more in the open? Well, Australia was one of the last places in the world to actually have witch hunts. Right? And we, pro we promulgated pro-pagan propaganda, pro propaganda against it right up to 2003. Our last witch hunt in Australia started in 1974, was authorised by the government and continued in Australia to 2003. Last place in any Western culture that actually had a government authorised witch hunt. Right, so we're a little nervous about coming out in the public because of that. We do have open rituals and open sabbats that you can come along to if you're curious. Right, as long as you treat us with respect, we'll treat you with respect too. And hopefully we can answer a few more questions for you before the day is out. So thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Shay. We'll be taking questions in general at the end of the panel. Uh, next up is, is Glennis Livingstone.